you all a very happy Diwali and a prosperous new year. Well, in this video, we are going to discuss about a concept called maximum pain theory or what is called as a max pain in relation to options trading. Now, this concept of max pain is slightly controversial. Uh, a lot of people don't think it works, but over a period of time, it has been proven that it does work quite consistently. This concept may not be very relevant for intraday trading, but this could be quite useful when you are taking positions and options over a slightly extended period of time, say 15 days or a month or even two months. Okay, But as far as intraday trading is concerned, this may or may not prove very beneficial. So without any further delay, let's begin. What is Max Payne theory used for? Like I mentioned, it is used for predicting or forecasting price of the underlying on the expiry. That means traders use it to predict or forecast what is going to be the price of the underlying on expiry. And once you are able to forecast the price on expiry, then remember you can take your positions accordingly. Right. So if I know, for example, that Nifty is going to expire at 12,600 levels, then maybe I can buy 12,400 call or 12,500 call, which right now may be available at quite cheap levels. So this is used for predicting or forecasting the price of the underlying on expiry. Now, before we discuss the max paying theory, let us understand a few underlying assumptions which lie beneath this theory. Now, first of all, as I have discussed in my series of videos relating to option chain data, and for those of you who have still not watched that series, I'm providing a link of that right at the top out here. So you can click the link, watch those series of videos because it would help you understand a lot of uh, things which I'm going to discuss today. Now, in in that series of video, I discussed that buyers of options are generally retail players who have a limited capacity to absorb losses, whereas sellers of options are highly knowledgeable players because remember, sellers of options are exposed to unlimited losses. Therefore, they are usually people who have the capacity to bear such unlimited losses. Now, typically, who could be such people? Such persons could be high net worth individuals or institutional players. Therefore, we say that sellers are by and large usually high net worth individual or institutions who have a greater knowledge about the market and who have access to certain information which the retail player may not have. Therefore, the sellers usually so what have exactly a better the max chance pain of winning. See, what the max pain theory states is that on expiry, the underlying asset price will gravitate or move towards that point where the buyers will feel the maximum pain. Now try to understand what I'm saying. Max pain theory states that as the option nears expiry, the underlying price, the underlying assets price will tend to move towards that point where the buyers will experience the maximum pain. Now understand, as a buyer, when will you incur the maximum losses? Now, first of all, what is the maximum loss that a buyer can incur? The maximum loss that a buyer can incur will be to the extent of the premium, which means the maximum loss will be incurred by a buyer when the option dies worthless or the option's value becomes zero. Now, when will the option's value become zero? on expiry. It will become zero on expiry if the option expires at the money or out of the money. Because understand, if the option is expiring in the money, then on the last day, the value of the option will be equal to the intrinsic value. Whereas if the option expires at the money or out of the money, then it will have no intrinsic value. And since we are talking about the value of option on expiry, there is going to be no time value also. That means the maximum loss or the maximum pain that the buyer will feel will be when the options that he holds expire at zero value. Like I mentioned, essentially that point where the maximum number of options will become 
worthless. Now, we need to understand something here. I said at the beginning that this theory is slightly controversial. Now, why is this theory slightly controversial? A buyer very well knows that he will suffer the maximum loss if the option expires at the money or out of the money. Now, let us take an example of a call. Let us say there is a buyer of a call who has purchased a call with a strike price of, let us say, 500. If the underlying assets price on expiry is 500, then the option will be at the money option and therefore it will have a zero value. Or let us say if the underlying assets price is less than the exercise price, let us say the underlying assets price is 450, then of course this option with a strike price of 500 will expire out of the money. And that means this option will be trading at zero. Now the buyer knows that if the price of the underlying is 500 on expiry or goes below 500, then he will suffer the maximum loss. But then even the seller knows it. That the buyer will suffer the maximum loss if this underlying assets price is 500 or below 500. Now these sellers being high net worth individual or institutional players will put in all their efforts in ensuring that the underlying assets price on expiry is either 500 or below 500. Now you might say, sir, how can they do it? First of all, understand we are talking about high net worth individuals and institutional players who have got access to vast funds as well as access to stocks. Now, if they want to drive the stock price onward, let us say currently the stock price is trading at 600 and there is still one month left for expiry. Now, the high net worth individuals or the institutional players know that in order for the option to expire at the money or out of the money, the stock price either has to be at 500 or 450 on expiry. But currently the stock price is at 600. So what they will do is they will start selling the stock or they would start selling the stock futures in order to drive the stock price down to 500 or below 500. And once they are able to achieve this, then remember on expiry, the option will be either out of the money or at the money and the buyer of the option will not exercise it. And therefore the seller can take the entire premium. And at this point, the buyer's pain is maximum, right? That is why I said that this is controversial because one may put forth the argument so that in a perfect market, it is not easy for anyone to drive the prices of stock in one direction. Well, that's a debatable issue and could be a subject matter of discussion in another video. But right now, we'll presume that they are able to do so. In which case, and remember, the high net worth individual or the institutional players, they are predominantly sellers of an option and they are more knowledgeable. Which means if we are able to find out that at which point of option strike price, there is maximum number of sellers who have accumulated. And this will again tell us that the option sellers will try to push the price of the underlying asset on expiry towards that level, because that is the place where the maximum sellers have come in. Right? So to give you an example, suppose in a particular option, the maximum number of sellers are at a strike price of 500. Then it is quite obvious that the sellers will do everything within their means to push the underlying assets price to 500 or below 500 so that they can take the entire premium and make the maximum profit and thereby inflict the maximum pain on the buyers. Now the question is, how do we find out at which point are the sellers congregating in very high amounts. Now this is where open interest comes into play. Now till now whatever I've discussed is with respect to call, of course when it comes to put, then the sellers of the option will put in all their efforts in ensuring that the underlying assets price stays above a particular point so that the buyers of the put do not exercise the put and thereby the sellers can eat their entire premium. How do we find out at which point the pain is maximum? But before doing that, now that we know the concept of max pain, let us understand how we can use it for trading. See, once we find the max pain level, we can take positions accordingly. For example, if the current Nifty is 12,500 and the max pain is indicated at 12,600, 
Now this means said that, that since the max pain level is at 12,600, what does this mean? This means that the price on expiry will move towards 12,600. Then we can set up strategy assuming that Nifty will go up to 12,600 which is the maximum pain level. If Nifty is below the maximum pain level, then we can go long on Nifty. And if Nifty is above the max pain level, then we can go short on Nifty. We can keep a track of Nifty and anytime there is a big move, then we can take positions accordingly since we know what is going to be the likely price of the underlying asset on expiry. But here the key point remember is the price of stock on expiry. So it is pertinent or important for you to know that you might have to hold the options till expiry for this theory to kick in place. As I mentioned in the introduction, is it useful for intraday? By and large, no. It is generally used for building up positions which have a slightly longer expiry tenure. Like I said, 15 days or a month or maybe even two months. But it is generally not suitable for intraday. However, if you know the max pain level, then possibly on the last day of the option, that is on the expiry day, you might use it for selling options and take the premium. For example, if I know that the max pain level is 12,600 and let us presume that today is an option expiry day and currently the index is trading at 12,500. Now, in this case, you might buy a call. But now think of a situation where currently the option is trading at 12,700 and you know that the max pain threshold is 12,600. That means the price on expiry is likely to be 12,600. And currently 12,700 call is trading at, let us say, a premium of 50 paise. Then what you can do is you can immediately sell these calls because if the max pain theory works, then the price of Nifty on expiry will be at 12,600 and the option that you sold, the call option that you sold with a strike price of 12,700 is likely to die worthless and you walk away with the premium. So it can be used for a limited purpose for intraday, especially on the last day. But other than that, one should not use this for taking intraday positions. How is the max pain calculated? It is calculated by adding the cumulative losses of all call and puts at various levels of strike prices from the viewpoint of the option writer. Hear this out very carefully. We are going to compute the cumulative losses of all the calls and all the puts at various strike prices from the viewpoint of the option writer. Now, how we are going to do it is something that I'll discuss and show you. Now, how do we do that? See, there are various I'll first take you through the steps and then I'll actually illustrate how we do it. Step one is we list down the various strike prices on the exchange and note down the open interest of both the calls and the puts for these strikes. See, when we look at the option chain data table, we very well know what are the various strike prices and what is the various open interest against each of those strike prices. So all we need to do is make a note of all the strike prices. So let us say we have the strike price column. And this is for call and a similar exercise will be done for put. And this is the open interest column. So what we need to do is take down all the strike prices which are there, whether it's in the money, out of the money, doesn't matter. And take down all the open interest against each of these strike prices. Right? And similarly, we do the same thing for put as well. Step two, for each of the strike price that you have noted, assume that the market expires at that strike price. Suppose, let's take this strike. Price. So we will first make an assumption that if the market expires at this level, what will be the losses that the writer of the puts will incur on all these other calls? Understand what I'm saying? If I presume that the market expires at this level, we will calculate what will be the losses, total losses that the sellers of call will experience at all these levels. Now, how will you find the total losses? Obviously, loss at this level 
into the open interest. That will give us the total loss at this level. Then we take this level, compute the losses into open interest against that particular strike level. And we do it for put also. See this. Calculate how much money is lost by option writers, both call and put option writers, assuming the market expires as per the assumption in step two. Okay. Now, again, I'll illustrate this by way of an example. So you'll be able to understand this slightly better. But first, let us just go through the steps. Then add up the money lost by call and put option writers. See, once we have the losses at each level, right? Similarly, you'll have losses here also. You add up the losses of the call and the put. That means you will add up these results and identify the strike price at which the loss is minimum. From these places, we will identify the place where the loss is minimum. Now, remember, we are calculating the loss from the viewpoint of the option writer. And once we are able to identify that at this point, the loss is minimum, then that will be the point at which the buyer will suffer the maximum pain. Why is open interest being considered? Because open interest gives us an idea as to how many people or how many writers or how many sellers are accumulating at each strike level. Now, let, let me take you through an example. Now, to understand this concept, let us presume that there are only options with three strike prices in the market. That is strike price of 12,000, 12,100 and 12,200. And Keep the calculation simple. We'll keep the open interest on calls and put at a low figure. So this will help us uh, make the calculations rather easily, but the concept still would remain the same. So call open interest is 10, 20 and 30 at the respective strike prices and put open interest is 20 at a strike price of 12,000, 50 at a strike price of 12,100 and 40 at a strike price of 12,200. Now let's take the first instance where if the market price on expiry happened to be 12,000. So if market price equals to 12,000 on expiry. See, understand, if the market price is 12,000, then a call with a strike price of 12,000 will be at the money. So the buyer will not excise it. And the buyer of the call with a strike price of 12,100 will also not exercise it. And the buyer of a call with a strike price of 12,200 will also not exercise it, which means there is going to be no loss on calls sold. But as far as put is concerned, at 12,000, the put sold will be at the money and will not be exercised. Therefore, put with strike price of 12,000, loss will be zero. Put with a strike price of 12,100, that is a right to sell at 12,100 and the market price is 12,000 will definitely be exercised by the buyer. Therefore, this will result in a loss to the seller. So what will be the cumulative loss? Now, the cumulative loss on put with a strike price of 12,100 will be rupees 100. Now, why rupees 100? Because understand, if the market price is expiring at 12,000, then on a put with a strike price of 12,100, there's going to be a loss of rupees 100 into the total loss that is the open interest open interest is 50 into 50 so this will be the total loss that will be rupees 5000 similarly on a put with a strike price of 12200 there will be a loss of rupees 200 into open interest of 40 that is rupees 8000 therefore the total cumulative loss of the option writer if the market price on expiry is 12,000 will be on calls there is zero loss then on 12,000 there is zero loss and here the loss is 5,000 and 8,000. So therefore the cumulative losses will be 13,000. Now let us analyze the situation if market price on expiry is 12,100 then in this case the call with a strike price of 12,000 will be exercised by the buyer because the market price on expiry is 12,100. So there, there is going to be a loss of rupees 100 to the call writer. Loss on calls will be rupees 100 into 
the total open interest on calls at 12,000 that is 10. So that will be rupees 1000. And if the market price is 12,100, then the 12,100 call will be at the money. So this will be at the money and this will be out of the money. So there's going to be no other losses on the call. Let's look at the put side. So loss on puts. This will be on a strike. If the market price is 12,100, then the put with a strike price of 12,000, that is this one, will be an out of the money put. It will not be exercised. 12,100 will be at the money, so it will not be exercised. But the right to sell at 12,200 will definitely be exercised. So here there is going to be a loss of rupees 100 into the open interest at 12,200, that is 40. So the total loss will be rupees 5,000. Now understand, we are calculating the loss from the perspective of the seller, right? Okay. If market price on expiry is 12,200, then what will be the loss on calls? Let's look at this. The right to buy at 12,000 will be exercised. So loss will be rupees 200 into what is the open interest there? 10. That will be rupees 2000. Then the right to buy at 12,100 will be exercised. And here the open interest is 20. So rupees 100 into 20. So there will be a loss of rupees 2000. So the loss here will be rupees 4000. This is the loss as far as calls are concerned. Then what will happen in put? Right to sell at 12200. If the market price ends at 12200, then the right to sell at 12000 and 12100 will obviously not be exercised because they'll be out of the money and the right to sell at 12200 will also not be exercised because it will be at the money. So there's going to be no loss as far as the sellers are concerned. Sellers of the puts, loss on puts will be zero. Therefore, total loss will be rupees 4000. Now, if you look at these three figures, that is 13,000, 5000 and 4000. You will notice that the cumulative losses as far as the sellers are concerned is the lowest at the strike price of 12,200. Meaning that the sellers will try very hard to drive the prices of the underlying asset to 12,200 on expiry because that is the point at which the losses for the sellers is minimum. Now, in this case, we find that the losses are minimum when the underlying price on expiry happens to be 12,200. Now, therefore, this will be the point which will be called as the maximum pain level for the buyers. Right? Now, I have taken an example where there are only three strike prices. Let us take an example and for this we will be using Excel. Let us take an example where there are multiple strike prices with various open interests and see how we calculate that. So let's open Excel for that. Okay, now in this Excel sheet, I have taken various strike prices starting from 12,000 to 12,650. Then I have taken some figures for all open interest. And similarly, I have taken some data for put open interest. Now, let us check how this table is prepared. See, if the market price on expiry is 12,000, then the call with a strike price of 12,000 will be at the money and will not be exercised. So there will be no loss. And for all the calls with a strike price above 12,000, so a right to buy at 12,050 will obviously not be exercised if the market price is 12,000. Right? So all these calls will expire out of the money and therefore there will be no loss as far as the seller is concerned. Now, if the market price on expiry is 12,050, then the call with a strike price of 12,000 will be exercised. Now that will give us a loss of 50. That is, remember, the market price on expiry is 12,050 and this is a call with a strike price of 12,000. So there's going to be a loss of 50 into 250 that will be 12,500. 
right? So there will be a loss of 12,500 as far as this call is concerned. But for all calls which have a strike price of 12,050 and above, they will not be exercised. So in this case, the loss will be 12,500. Okay. Similarly, if the market price on expiry is 12,100, then remember the call with a strike price of 12,000 will be exercised, giving us a loss of 100 into 250, that is 25,000. Call with a strike price of 12,050 will be exercised, giving us a loss of 50 into 300, that is 15,000. And 12,100 call will not be exercised because it is at the money and the rest of the calls will not be exercised because they are all going to be out of the money. Therefore, the cumulative loss if the market price on expiry is 12,100 will be 25,000 here and 15,000 here. So that's 40,000. So similarly, we have prepared the table showing cumulative losses for all these levels. And then we find the cumulative losses for puts are concerned. Now puts, let us start bottom. If the market price on expiry is 12,650, then obviously the put with a strike price of 12,650 will be ATM and will not be exercised. And all the other puts which have a strike price of below 12,650 will be OTM and therefore will not be exercised. That means the loss in this case will be zero. Right. If the market price on expiry is 12,600, then a put with a 12,650 will be exercised resulting in a loss of 50 right, into 400 that is 20,000. And put with a strike price of 12,600 will not be exercised because it is out of at the money. And all these other puts will also be not exercised because they'll be out of the money. That means the loss here is 20,000. So similarly, we have calculated the cumulative losses for all these strike levels as regards put. Then what we do is we add up the cumulative losses. That is we add up the cumulative loss of call with the cumulative loss of put at each level and we find the total losses. And remember, these are losses which are computed from the perspective of the seller of the option. The seller of the options will obviously try to push the underlying price to the level where his loss is going to be the minimum. And if you look at this table, you will find that his, the seller's loss is minimum at 9,7500, which arises at a strike price of 12,350. Now this indicates to us that 12,350 is the max pain level, which means the chances are very likely that the market price of Nifty on expiry with the given set of data will be at 12,350. Now if you are able to determine this max pain level, then understand you can easily take positions in options. So if you find a call which is trading at say 12,500 and which is carrying a premium of 5 rupees, you can sell it. Because as per your analysis on the max pain data, the, the market price on expiry is going to be 12,350. Therefore, the call with a strike price of 12,500 is most likely to end out of the money, which means you can just take the premium and get away with it, right? So, the, and if we plot this cumulative loss on a graph, we get a graph something like this here. So if you look at this graph here, you will find that the loss as far as the sellers are concerned are minimum at this point 12,350 strike price. Right? So this is max pain level. The point where the minimum loss is indicated in this graph will indicate the max pain level. So friend, that was a very short video describing the concept of max pay. Now, there are a couple of things that you have to keep in mind. One is, this is something that you would need to keep monitoring on a daily basis because the max pain threshold level would keep changing. But having said that, what I personally tend to do is calculate the max pain level, say, once in 15 days. Because I would tend to typically take position of a call which has still 15 days to expiry, right? Now, again, I am not using this technique to do intraday trades on the last day of the expiry. Now, that's a different ball game altogether. I use this technique typically when I'm taking a little bit of a long-term position in options. 
say 15 days or a month. Now what I do is let us say I'm taking a 15 day position in Opti. So I calculate the max pain threshold level for a 15 day period. And I also give a buffer of say 5%. That means for instance, if the maximum threshold level of pain, which I have calculated arrives at 10,000, then mentally I keep a figure of 9,500 to 10,500. That is a buffer of 5% on either side. And I treat this band as the maximum pain level, right? And then accordingly, I take positions. Now, I'm once again reiterating that this is not a concept which you would use on a standalone basis. You will have to use this together or in sync with other analytical tools or other analytical techniques which you would tend to use on an option chain data table. The option chain data table is also something on which you, you would have to do a 360 degree analysis. So you can't just take one parameter and keep working along with it because there are other things which affect your option prices and you would have to constantly keep a track of it. But yes, as far as determining levels for taking a position which is slightly longer term is concerned, the max pain technique does give you a fair bit of an idea or a ballpark figure as to where you can reasonably expect the underlying price to be on expiry. Right. So to that extent, this is a useful tool. I hope you found this video useful. Please subscribe to my channel if you have not already done and do hit the bell icon so that you are notified every time I upload a video. Stay safe, stay healthy and cheer.